Spring Boot GraphQL also has the capabilities to support file uploading. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do just that. So what you will first want to do is let's define a new mutation. And this mutation is going to allow us to accept the file and perform that write operation where we might send it over the wire or send it to some kind of content storage version of the system. So let's go ahead and create a mutation. So I'm just simply going to call this upload file, the demo. And here we don't actually need to accept any parameters, but if you want the user to also supply some additional metadata with the file, like a brief description, maybe a name or whatever, then you can supply that just like you have supplied here, the bank account that needs to be supplied in input type. But for us, we're going to ignore that, keep this simple, and we're just going to return an ID of the file that we have successfully uploaded. So now what we do is we create a mutation. And in here, we're going to call this like upload file mutation. And just similar to the other mutation, we implement the marker interface, the mutation resolver. And then we're going to return an ID, so the UUID, and we match the name, so it's called upload file. And we didn't have any parameters, but what's important here is we actually have to introduce this concept or introduce this class, which is called data fetching environment. And I'm going to have a dedicated video to that, where I explain all about this data fetching environment and what it contains and, and the powerful uh, the powerful objects it contains where you can look in and see forward, see what the user requested, see what their selection set is, get access to the arguments, get access to authorization, etc, etc. So a dedicated video coming up for that. But we need this to actually get access to the files and it's going to give us the parts um, from the servlet. So how does this actually get injected? So the data fetching environment must be the last parameter in a mutation or a resolver, and the framework will automatically inject that into the, the method for you. So no worries there. Let's come ahead and write a log line. So log.info, uploading file for, let's just say uploading file. And how we actually get access to the file is we call it in the environment and there's a context with that. Now that's going to return an object type because it's of T at the method level. So it's using method level generics. But this is actually a default GraphQL servlet. And I'll debug this to show you. So default GraphQL servlet context. So this is actually the class by default. And this class will contain the data loader registry. We'll exp I'll explain in a minute or in another video how to do the Facebook data loading. And it contains the actual request, the response. It contains the file parts. You can get access to the normal parts and server context and whatnot. And this is actually customizable, which again, in another video, I'll explain how we do that. But for the purpose of this, this will contain the file parts. So we can simply say context to get file parts. And then at this stage, you can actually take these parts. And if you wanted to, you could buffer them to memory and store them, or you can get the input streams and stream them somewhere, which is, which is nice. So let's just say for each part, um, let's write a wee log line. So log.info um, uploading. We'll put the name and then we'll say size. And here we'll say part dot get submitted file name. So that's the name of the file we actually uploaded from the client. And let's get the size of that. And let's log that, so I'll replace that with a lambda. And let's see, but now if you're actually uploading in, in the wild, in real life production, I mean, you don't just accept in anything. And again, 
of course, some of the things at the top of my head are if you're buffering large f files to memory, well, you really can only do so many in parallel and you really need some kind of exclusive zone where only X requests can be buffered into memory at one time. Otherwise, your app could fall over and run and crash with out of memory error. So we definitely want to prevent that. Of course, you want to check that the files uploaded are whitelisted. So the, the suffix is like .pdf if you only accept PDFs and have a whitelist rather than a blacklist, etc., etc. So let's just assume that you follow all that practices and I'll put a few breakpoints here and let's debug this. Let's see what happens. Let's see if it starts. So it started fine. And instead of using Playground, I'm going to use Postman because I need to set some special parameters here. So in the request body, I'm actually going to set it to form data. And when we set it to form data, we need two keys. And the first one is called operations. And this is where we define the actual GraphQL query in JSON format. So here inside the query parameter, I'm saying I want to run the mutation upload file. And I don't have any variables for the moment, so I can pass an empty. And then here we have a file type and we actually attach the file. And here I'm uploading my demo file. So this is text, the top one, and the text and the bottom one's file. So let's go ahead and play that. So now we're breakpointed and you can see I'm, I'm in here and we have the default GraphQL server context here. and. So if I get context dot, you can see that I can get access to everything, the file parts and whatnot. And from here, I'm going to iterate over and print the, the different parts. So I can put a breakpoint here. I'll play and you'll see I have one part, which is the upload file and it's temporarily stored in, yeah, Tomcat. So at this point, you can yeah, get these, get these parts. And if you wanted to, you could say part get the input stream and there you have the input stream of the actual bytes. So let me play that through. So one other thing I would recommend is that you actually come in here and you adjust the spring max file size. So if we look here, we have a max file size and by default it should be like one meg, I think it said. So if I remove this, so Size equals one, one megabyte. Well, we can set this to whatever we want, three megabytes or whatever it is we want. So I would definitely adjust this and make sure that it satisfies your requirement. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next tutorial.